Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part three of our evaluation of the suspected renal mass, key differential clues. And last time we left off mentioning that a key phase, of course, is the excretory phase, which is typically defined as CTRography. There used to be many different techniques for doing this, anywhere between four to 10 minutes post-injection. A lot of people like eight to 10 minutes. I don't like it because the contrast gets too dense and you have beam hardening artifact. I like to be at four to five minutes. Typically about four minutes works very nicely. If I'm doing a UPJ, then I'll wait for eight minutes. Also, you think about it, if you wait five minutes on every patient extra, you're gonna waste about two hours a day in a busy practice. Now, the key thing about excretory phase imaging is really the detection of transitional cell carcinomas. These are lesions that count for about 10% of renal tumors. They're often multifocal, older age patient, and very easy to miss. They also, importantly, are multifocal. They're more common in men than women. And this metachronous TCCs become very important. So if you see a lesion in the kidney, look carefully at the ureter, look carefully at the bladder. You see a bladder TCC, look at the upper tracts. There's multiple lesions at presentation or recurrence in that pattern becomes very, very important. This article, Vikram, the hallmark of TCC is multiplicity and recurrence, okay? Very, very important. When you think about urothelial carcinomas, there's a range of appearances from very small polypoid lesions to subtle pelvic cell irregularities, which are often stricture-like, to focal or diffuse mural thickening, to abrupt calocele amputation, to tumor-filled distended calices. Obviously, the earlier you pick things up, the more subtle it is. And the subtle lesions are really where you want to make the diagnosis. That's what we're getting paid for. That's what improves patient care. Very critical. When you have large TCCs, the only issue to me sometimes is separating them from an infiltrating renal cell or lymphoma or METs, and occasionally, though rarely, XGP, because XGP typically has big stank or calculi. Now, on early phase imaging, TCCs are easy to miss. If you look at this case, early phase imaging, it's very subtle, but what's going on right here? Is that anything of any importance, that soft tissue density? What exactly is that? You keep looking at it and you kind of think for a second, but if you go to the excretory phase, it becomes very clear it's an infiltrating process, it has a mass there, you look at it in the coronal view, there's destruction of the pelvis, there's tumor infiltration, there's involvement of the upper pole calyces, very clearly shown. And beautiful example of showing you the pelvis irregularity, the upper pole calyces being invaded, classic transitional cell carcinoma. But you can see from the arterial phase, it's subtle, and to maybe you're surprised there was no cortical medullary change in dif or differentiation. There was no thinning of the cortex. So you could have a real aggressive looking tumor that's fairly large and yet not see those subtle changes. Now, sometimes you can appreciate TCC or suspect it on the non-contrast. Here's an example. There's fullness in the left renal pelvis and there's even calcification. And there you can see on the arterial phase, this subtle enhancement, but it's that pelvis that's really of concern, though the cortex of the kidney doesn't look very bad. And here it is as you go to the venous phase. Again, this infiltrating process in the renal pelvis with calcification. And on the excretory phase, the destruction of the calyces, the destruction of the renal pelvis with infiltration by tumor is much clearer. So on the excretory phase, it answers all of the questions, and you really get a feel of how extensive that patient's tumor, in fact, is. And here's some more views. This case also makes the point that MIP imaging can be very valuable for looking at transitional cell carcinomas. This also makes the point about looking elsewhere. There's also tumors in the patient's right ureter and in the upper pole calyx of the right kidney. So multiplicity, you got to look carefully. Here's cinematic rendering of that left renal pelvis and the calyceal deformity secondary to the patient's neoplasm. Now, when we see renal vein involvement, I always like to think about renal cell carcinoma, especially clear cell. And here's a patient with an infiltrating process in the left kidney 
where perhaps the thing you think about most is going to be a, a renal cell carcinoma. You can see there's involvement of the renal vein, which is markedly dilated. And renal vein involvement is much more common in classic renal cell, but it also can be seen in transitional cell. When you look at the uh, 3D mapping, upper pole, that infiltration of the upper half of the kidney, you can see it again on the coronal views here, and you see the renal vein involvement. So the point is, TCCs, as they get larger, can invade the renal vein, can be infiltrating, and the infiltrating can at times look like a renal cell carcinoma. But as you can see here, when you go to excretory phase, the deformity of the renal pelvis, the calyces being cut off and infiltrated, that makes it much easier to explain to you that we are dealing with a TCC. Now, I also like to comment on other tumors. I've given talks on renal cell cancer in the past, and you talk a little bit about transitional cell, but you really don't mention other tumors. So let me talk to you a little bit about lymphoma. Lymphoma has a range of appearances on CT. Lymphoma, as we know, is a gray mimicker. It's typically hypovascular, it doesn't involve the vessels, can be solitary or multiple, can be diffusely infiltrating, can involve the kidney alone or the perirenal space, can involve the perirenal space and pararenal space and not involve the kidney per se, can be unilateral or can be bilateral. There are numerous appearances. It can look like almost anything. It may have adenopathy, it may not. If you see bulky adenopathy, yes, you can see bulky adenopathy with adenocarcinoma, but you should be thinking about lymphoma as well. And here's some schematics showing you the possible ways we could think about renal lymphoma. So let's look at some examples. Renal lymphoma, first of all, usually occurs in the setting of widespread non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, typically B-cell type. Involvement by Hodgkin's disease is less common, being seen in less than 1% of patients at presentation. But it's this variable appearances that makes it somewhat challenging. Now, when you look at autopsy series, this one by Richmond showed that over 60% of cases had lymphoma in the kidneys at autopsy. We don't see it nearly that often on CT or MR, but you can see it if you look very careful. Appearances. Here's a good example of bilateral enlarged kidneys with infiltration. The kidneys are not enhancing normally. There's no good cortical medullary interface. It's infiltrated. You can see in this case only the left kidney, but in, in the prior case, both kidneys were infiltrated. You could think about amyloidosis. You could think about acute renal failure, things that give you poor function and infiltration. But lymphoma is at the top of my list. That was lymphoma. Lymphoma can involve one kidney. This patient has nodes in the periodic region. The tumor not only involves the kidney, but involves the peri and pararenal space. Or in this case, lymphoma involving the right kidney, it's infiltrating very much in a way that you might consider transitional cell carcinoma. Often when you have renal involvement by lymphoma, what helps you also is looking at other areas. Here's a patient's large mediastinal mass. That's how the patient actually presented with a cough, widening of the mediastinum on chest x-ray, CT was done, but you can see bulky adenopathy and infiltration of the patient's right kidney. Just a beautiful example. This one's a little bit more tricky to me. There's an infiltrating tumor in the right kidney, but I guess I could think about a classic renal cell carcinoma. There's really no adenopathy. It's kind of bulky. This was lymphoma, not the most typical. In this case, what helped you a little bit was if you look carefully on excretory phase, there was a lesion in the contralateral kidney. But as I mentioned to you, you can't have contralateral renal cell carcinoma. So this case was more of a challenge. As lesions become isolated to the kidney, we tend to favor renal cell over lymphoma. But this case very nicely shows you that you need to think differently. Now, lymphoma also can present with multiple hypodense lesions to the point it almost looks like polycystic kidney disease, except the kidneys are enlarged and the lesions are in cystic. They're hypodense, so lymphoma of the kidney. Another example, extension of the kidney and through the kidney into the perirenal space with bulky diffuse infiltrating is a wonderful example for lymphoma. Here you can see the mass infiltration, but you don't see anything in the periodic region or the contralateral kidney. 
What else could this be? We talk about things like Ernheim Chester disease, but that's bilateral. We talk about things like melanoma, but melanoma usually is solitary nodules in the pararenal space, though you can see stuff in the perirenal space. But this is really good for lymphoma. Here's another one, same pattern left kidney, but bulkier disease. There's tumor infiltrating the pancreas and the paraortic regions. You can see that infiltration, but the kidney is still functioning. That's very good for lymphoma. Now, as I mentioned, perinephric spread, lymphoma's in the top of my list. Mets for melanoma are there, but they're usually more solitary, not diffusely infiltrating. Things like hemorrhage, but you'll see a renal laceration. Extra medial hematopoiesis, but it's typically bilateral. Retroperitoneal fibrosis, things are from around the aorta pulled in typically. And Ernheim Chester is perirenal space, diffusely around the kidney 360, but usually also again bilateral. And again, perirenal infiltration of the left kidney. Just impressive how large the disease is. And you can see the left kidney seems to function normally. Here's another example, non-contrast and late phase. Look at the tumor, look at the adenopathy. And in this case, you would probably surmise that the left kidney is infiltrated secondarily to the patient's primary mass. But you could see in lymphoma, like this case, the bulky adenopathy, the involvement of the kidney. This is more classic. A lot of the cases I showed you before this were lymphoma involving the kidney, but not really involving the periodic region, which was kind of interesting. Just huge bulky disease, basically a sheet of tumor coming from the upper abdomen, straight down the mesentery and omentum involving the kidneys and the pancreas and the bowel. So think about lymphoma. You may be uh, making a great diagnosis because if they think about lymphoma, then they'll biopsy the patient. The patient will get chemo and not surgery. Now, there are other lesions. I mentioned chromophobe renal cells, and let me just speak about that a little bit. It's about 5% of renal cell carcinomas. These are relatively benign lesions. That's what's very important about them. Metastasis are indeed rare, with a five-year survival of over 90%. So that becomes very, very important. The lesions are usually relatively hypovascular. Chromophobe renal cells were, find, were found to have a wider variability of CT features than previously reported. Their enhancement characteristics fall in between those of clear cell renal cell carcinoma and papillary, although there's considerable overlap. The mean diameter of uh, chromophobes is about 5.2 centimeters. 46% of tumors were homogeneous. 85% of the lesions were either completely solid or mostly solid. Occasionally, you had calcification. It's interesting, the enhancement value is very close to what you would see with a papillary renal cell carcinoma. They typically present as well-described masses, central scar. If you see a homogeneous lesion with a central scar, then I really do think about a chromophobe because they are really good for partial nephrectomies. But again, it's a small percent of tumor and they have a variable appearance. Here's a lesion, solid renal mass. You see it's enhancing a bit, but not very much. Well-defined, could be a papillary, surely. This was a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Another one, well-defined mass, almost the same density as the regular kidney, sharply defined. With contrast, it's mildly vascular, but little different. You can see the enhancement 116 is the cortex, and this enhanced about 72, so a little bit less. You can see it stands out, sharply marginated. I don't know, it's hard to call this much more than a papillary renal cell carcinoma. I will have to admit, but this ended up being a chromophobe. But you can see chromophobes don't always look so relatively benign looking and look like papillary. Here's one with dystrophic calcification, really poor enhancement, but it's solid. So you know this is a tumor. You're not sure what kind of tumor it is. Central location, there's no way you can do a partial. And this was also a chromophobe. So you can see sometimes chromophobes look like relatively indolent looking lesions and sometimes they can follow them, but other times they look much more aggressive. So I don't think you really can just simply ignore it. Okay, very hard. Now what about oncocytic neoplasms? It's a fairly common diagnosis, 9% of solitary renal masses. There's no good imaging technique at this point, though 
some of the nuclear studies are being developed for differentiating an oncocytic renal cell from an oncocytoma with 100% reliability. The issue is if you do a biopsy, it comes back consistent with oncocytoma. If the rest of the material is an oncocytoma, then it's an oncocytoma. But unless you remove the tumor, you have a problem because there are often hybrid tumors that are both oncocytomas and renal cell carcinomas. If you know something's an oncocytoma, it's a benign tumor. It does not cause symptoms. Um, again, patients occasionally will have flank pain and hematuria, but these are just simply benign lesions, more commonly in men over the age of 50, but it's a tough call to make the diagnosis. You do see them more commonly in certain conditions, tuber sclerosis complex, bird hoag dube syndrome are two of the possibilities. But again, it's difficult distinguishing renal oncocytomas from renal cell carcinoma short of doing surgery. A couple examples, solitary mass, right kidney, homogeneous enhancement. So one thing I like about oncocytomas, they're typically homogeneous. So if I see a lesion enhancing that's homogeneous, I'm going to at least suggest an oncocytoma. That's probably a good way of thinking about it. Here you can see it's homogeneous, well-defined throughout all the phases. Now they can be large. Here's a large one projecting anteriorly off the right kidney. A very nice example, 100 Hounsfield units roughly, solid mass, homogeneous, oncocytoma. Again, take a look at this lesion and really think about it. So sometime in the future, you might be able to suggest it. Again, in terms of attenuation, it's closer to papillary than to clear cell, of course. And also, you know, it's just a very, very tough diagnosis. Looks very similar to the chromophobes I showed you as well. I think the main difference is the oncocytomas are more homogeneous. So just a really nice looking lesion. Another example, left renal mass. You give, look at the non-contrast, not very specific. Here you see these lobulations of the lesion, central scarring. People talk about a central scar as being good for chromophobe. Is this a central scar or is this necrosis? Kind of looks like a central scar like you might see with FNH. So homogeneous lesion, well-defined central scar. You gotta be thinking about an oncocytoma, but again, you're not gonna see many of them looking exactly like that. And here it is on the late phase imaging where the scar somewhat fills in. And here's the cinematic. It's interesting, the scar kind of fills in very much like the scar fills in with FNH. Here's another lesion. This lesion in the right kidney has faint calcification. But you can see the vascularity. That looks like central necrosis. To me, this is a clear cell with central necrosis. Not very difficult to call that, right? Central necrosis, hypervascular. To me, this is malignant, and you would worry about the aggressiveness of the tumor because of the central necrosis. You could see the washout. Again, coronal views. Same thing on the cinematic. I'm showing it to you 10 different ways, but at the other end of the spectrum, of course, it's just a difficult diagnosis. Now, what about metastasis? I mentioned before you can have metachronous lesions, you can have a TCC which develops multiple lesions, you can have multiple renal cells in patients like with tuber sclerosis, but meds to the kidney can occur. It's not common, but we are seeing it more common. We see it from lung and colon, head and neck and breast are all possibilities. The most common thing is typically gonna be lung cancer. Occasionally, patients will present with hematuria. You'll find the renal mass, think it's a primary, and then only later on realize it's metastatic. Here's a patient with known breast cancer, pleural effusion, and as part of staging, you see bilateral renal masses. They're not sharply defined, they're kind of infiltrating. You could even think about polynephritis, but it's the kidney's larger. You could think about lymphoma, perhaps. This was metastasis bilateral infiltrating lesions. The patient has liver metastasis as well, and the patient also has bone metastasis. But you could see, if you only had the kidney alone, how it could be confused with inflammatory disease, even infarction, even primary lymphoma, or all be good possibilities. But here, excretory phase imaging, again, 
You're seeing the bilateral renal masses and extensive aggressive bony lesions as well. So I've gone through a number of different things. I've gone through a number of different tumors, showed some of the features, showed some of the challenges. Some things are specific like lymphoma often, but not always. TCCs maybe. Chromophobes and oncocytomas are challenging. I talk about metastasis and how it was seeing them more frequently, how you need to look at the kidney as part of staging, and how at times it can be the presentation of the patient's primary tumor. You need to understand the importance of protocols and phases and how lesions look different in different phases. And I've pointed out many of the pitfalls, and hopefully you'll now miss some of those pitfalls. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. If you liked what you heard here today, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and visit our website, ctss.com, for lectures, quizzes, pearls, and more. Also, be sure to check out our apps that are available for free on the Apple Store. All links are in the description box below.